Thanks for braving the, uh, the kind of miserable weather after such beautiful days. Were any of you at Sunday's teaching? All right. Anybody have a comment you'd like to just shout out? How did it go for you? Was it good, good teaching? Excellent. Excellent? Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, for those of you who want to know, the teach-in uh, is now up on the website, neu.edu slash teach-in, or northeastern.edu slash teach-in. And all of the teach-in from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock was streamed live, and all of those videos are up in segments on the website under video. So if you want to uh, see any more of it, come take a look and you'll see it there. Uh, we'll be doing more about this uh, and you'll hear more about it in future teachings. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you last week. I understand that uh, uh, Professor Dukakis did a pretty good job of impersonating me. <laughs> I was pleased that he did that. Um, and I understand you had a spectacularly wonderful Q&A session that went on forever. <laughs> but tonight, you have a special treat because I've invited two very, very dear friends. Um, I support both of their organizations uh, every year. Um, and as you know, we have, in the first half of this semester, for those of you who uh, weren't here, spent a lot of time taking a look at the kind of general issue of the role of government in the 21st century. And we had philosophers like Steve Nathanson, and we had uh, political scientists, and we had others who were exploring it in more general terms. We remember, if you weren't here, um, I uh, did a rare appearance in which I uh, <laughs> posed both as Milton Friedman uh, at this current height and this current look, and with a step stool, John Kenneth Galbraith, and we debated those two. Um, we had a number of my friends from different parts of the political spectrum, including Jim Sturgios, uh, the executive director of the Pioneer Institute, one of the more conservative think tanks here, who, by the way, had the week before uh, invited the uh, presidential candidate Rick Perry to Boston. He was here, and we debated a whole set of issues around Arthur Oaken's book, um, uh, The Big Trade-Off. But for the second half of the semester, we've been looking at specific issues. Uh, we've been looking at um, insurance, as we did last week. We've been looking at the whole question of uh, social security. In future weeks, including next week, we will have Eric Rosen after Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, not next week, but the week after. We'll have Eric Rosengren, the uh, uh, president and CEO of the Boston Federal Reserve Bank, and probably the most <laughs> renowned um, expert on financial regulation. Uh, on the Federal Reserve Board nationwide, joining us along with John Quoka, who spoke at our teach-in, who is an expert on the whole question of regulation of non-financial industries. Um, so we'll look forward to that. But tonight, tonight, we're gonna really get into a subject that I have been most interested in, and it is the whole question of government subsidy of radio, TV, and the arts. And I'm going to start out by, before I introduce our two guests, and I'm going to start out as being devil's advocate, uh, since we don't have a, a real good conservative here to, to make the argument. But the question could be, why should we, with all of the wonderful ways of, of forms of media we have, Fox TV, for example, why should we have a federal government or state government, uh, or in some cases even local government, subsidize art and culture and the media. After all, we have lots of private sector media outlets more than ever before, given the blogosphere and given the internet, given the AM dial, given the FM dial, uh, given the thousands and thousands of regional theater companies that we have, opera companies, MFA, which can easily pick up a $5 million donation from one person to set up one exhibit, why should the federal government or state government, particularly in an era of fiscal crisis when we have a um, deadline of November 23rd to see whether we save the republic, why should it spend a dime on public radio or public TV or the arts? That's what we're really going to talk about today. Our two speakers, uh, first of all, my dear friend, Charlie Kravitz, who I've known throughout most of his career, although he may not know it. <laughs> He's the general manager of my very favorite radio station, and indeed, of 
accorded the Edward R. Murrow Award for the best radio station in the United States, <laughs> WBUR. Oh. Um, and he's been general manager, and of course, coming out of BUR is not only our local um, programs, of which I've been very fortunate to be on many of them, but of course, a few of my great favorites, Car Talk, <laughs> On Point, Here and Now, and Bill Littlefield and Only a Game. Before Charlie Kravitz came, Kravitz came to BUR, he was the president and general manager of another uh, major e media outlet here, NECN. Charlie may not remember it, but when um, NECN first began, Phil Balbonia, Balboni created it, they had a wonderful um, anchor named Heather Kahn. And Heather invited me to give, uh, this is when I was a young guy, to give a 90-second commentary on the economy, which I did every Wednesday night with Heather, when NECN was brand new. Um, new England Cable, uh, NECN, New England Cable News, largest regional news channel in America, reaching 3.7 million viewers uh, in all six New England states. Uh, and it won all kinds of awards, including the Alfred DuPont Columbia University Broadcast Journalism Award, the highest award in television news history. And before that, Charlie was at WCBB TV Channel 5, uh, and while he was there, he was assistant news director, senior executive producer of new programming, and the original producer and later executive producer of Chronicle, uh, where I used to do a number of shows with Jerry Kirschenbaum way back in those days with uh, WCBB. So we have a superstar in the media, and I might add, one of the nicest people I know on the planet Earth. The other wonderful person is someone I've known for many years also, and some of you may have seen him when he appeared here two open classrooms ago, Spiro Volutis, who's the producing artistic director, uh, and now in his 12th season at the Lyric Stage uh, company here in Boston. Um, I have known the Lyric Stage since, I think, the second year of its productions back in 1974. Mm -hmm. And I have been a season ticket holder, and so I have seen over 200 different productions. It was always a great theater, but 12 years ago when Spiro became uh, the uh, producing artistic director, it, it just jumped a whole high, to a higher level. And some of the greatest plays I've seen here in New York or any place else in the world has been in this absolutely wonderful theater in the YWCA building um, uh, downtown. Uh, Lyric Stage productions under Spiro have won every kind of award you can imagine, including all kinds of Elliott Norton Awards, um, IRNE Awards, which is the Independent Review of New England Awards, and the most amazing thing about this, having just helped produce with Michael Dukakis and a small group of others uh, a all-day event uh, the teaching, one of those events which nearly killed me. <laughs> Spiro has actually directed over 90 different productions in his career. I mean, that number uh, itself just staggers me. And he's only 28 years old. <laughs> uh, to give you an idea of the range of uh, directing credits, listen to this. I mean, this, this really did stagger me, Spiro. Kiss Me Kate, Great Gardens, The Mystery of Irma Beck, Beck. Follies, The Importance of Being in Earnest, Three Tall Women, Arms of the Man, 1776, The Goat, Who is Sylvia, You're in Town, A Little Night Music, Noises Off, The Spitfire Grill, The Curse of the Bambino, and Sunday in the Park with George. I mean, you talk about <laughs> rage. Just spectacular. And that was I, uh, as of two years ago. <laughs> that, was, that was just two years ago. Right? And then I want to invite you, and I have to say uh, to be be fair, um, truth in advertising. I'm a member of the board of the Lyric Stage. Tomorrow night, November 17th, and running through December 17th, ain't misbehaving. And um, you really should try and come. I will be there Thursday night, December 8th. Anybody who wants to join me, I'd love to have you come to the theater. You want to not only attend the Lyric Stage in the same way I know you keep tuned to WBUR, you want to become a subscriber, and you want to go to all their plays. They're that good. <laughs> Charlie Kravitz. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to have you do this.
No. You lost the unit. No, no, I'm going to put it on. Oh, you do? Yeah.